Well, your other big story tonight, of course, is a historic groundbreaking. It's time to bury the label Rust Belt. Let's do it. This is the most significant piece of industrial policy legislation since World War II. This is a historic moment for the Buckeye State. We put our chips on the table. We are going to build the most advanced stuff in the world right here in Ohio. America invented this chip. America invented it. We can, we must, and we will make them here. No place that provides more opportunity than the state of Ohio. Made in Ohio and made in America is no longer just a slogan. It's happening. Now the Rust Belt is dead and the Silicon Heartland begins. A special edition of 10 TV News at 5. It's a historic day for the Buckeye State and a crucial moment of investment into the future of Ohio and America. History being made in our state as Intel breaks ground right here in Lincoln County. Tonight, 10 TV has you covered with team coverage across Central Ohio from wheels up to wheels down. Central Ohio's news leader was there for the iconic moments and the highlights of the day. But first, let's turn forward to what comes next. This nearly $20 billion semiconductor plant is now being constructed here in Lincoln County, turning farmland into what the Intel CEO calls the Silicon Heartland. I'm Andrew Kinsey. I've been out here at the Intel site all day long, and it has been quite eventful with several memorable moments. The big takeaway, the president's visit. What was his focus? Well, his focus was on bringing jobs back to America. In fact, he touted his efforts to boost domestic manufacturing using the Intel groundbreaking as a background. Lawmakers, union officials, local politicians, and business leaders all gathering here today to mark this historic day with the president and Intel leaders. This truly is history in the making. This $20 billion Intel project is the largest single private sector company investment in Ohio's history. In the president's words, it's bringing home jobs that have been overseas for a while, made possible with funding from the CHIPS Act, which he signed into law about a month ago, clearing the way for $50 billion for the chips industry. Folks, the future of the chip industry is going to be made in America. Made in America. <laughs> and folks at home should know the manufacturing of these semiconductors connects countless small businesses and manufacturers into a supply chain that's going to thrive all because of this law. Now, the Biden administration really advocated for the passage of the CHIPS Act to reestablish the U.S. as a chip manufacturing powerhouse which really took on new urgency during the pandemic. The pandemic spurred a nationwide chip shortage and inflamed a supply chain crisis, impacting various industries from automotive to consumer electronics. Right now, the U.S. makes 0% of the world's chip supply. Intel and this project here really has the potential to be one of the biggest semiconductor sites in the entire world with a total of investment of 100 billion dollars a big big investment here in ohio and our kevin landers continues our team coverage tonight he spoke with intel ceo moments before the groundbreaking today kevin well good evening intel ceo pat gelsinger admitted that the u.s is falling far behind the rest of the world when it comes to the making of semiconductor chips and we're falling behind in regards to stem education now, the, he credits the passage of the CHIPS Act as a seminal piece of legislation that he believes will kickstart Intel and others to produce semiconductors in the U.S. I asked him what this moment means for the company to break ground on a state-of-the-art chip factory in Ohio. This is the most significant piece of industrial policy legislation since World War II, right? If you think about that, you know, right, you know, for an industry to be revitalized, it's huge, you know, for the nation. When we get to stand on stage and say, today, the Silicon Heartland is underway, you know, it is so powerful and so good. Here's what else we learned. Intel says construction is on schedule. The company site manager says the two fabs will be built by 2025, but the first chips will come later. 
He says the site is designed to hold eight fabrication plants and believes that's possible in the next 10 years, assuming customers still believe in their product. Now, ahead at 5.30, while Intel celebrates its groundbreaking here, investors are not happy with its production. With more on Intel and the president, I turn to my colleague, Lacey Chris. Lacey. Yeah, Air Force One touched down around 1040 this morning with Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther on hand to greet the president. Also on Air Force One with the president from the Ohio delegation was Senator Sherrod Brown and Representative Joyce Beatty. Now, Biden spoke with the local representatives for about five to ten minutes on the tarmac before they all got into the motorcade to head to the groundbreaking. Mayor Ginther said the arrival of Intel to the region is a great example of business and communities working together to up lift livelihoods and improve the quality of life. Now, the president and Air Force One left the Columbus area around 2 o'clock this afternoon. We'll turn it back now to my colleague, Andrew Kinsey, who's in Licking County. All right, Lacey, thank you so much. So exactly how big is this project? Well, let's pause and take a look at the price tag and the benefit for Ohio. Intel's initial investment in Ohio exceeds $20 billion, making it the largest in Ohio history. The plan is to have two plants online by 2025, but with 1,000 acres in Lincoln County, Intel has plenty of room to grow. And forget about Silicon Valley, Ohio could soon become Silicon Valley. The company says it could end up spending more than $100 billion to build eight fabrication plants, making it one of the largest semiconductor manufacturing sites in the world.